What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Journey with Jazz, where we are on a mission to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ through binge-worthy content that caters to the everyday obstacles of women. We are capturing the everyday journey of faith. So welcome to my channel. My name is Jasmine Mullen Allen. I'm a licensed attorney here in Virginia. I'm an entrepreneur, mother, and wife. So let's get started. Let's jump in. The title of this message is, What's the Magic Word? Okay, so grab your Bibles, grab your notebooks. We are coming out of John chapter 14, starting with verse six. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. For now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say I am the Father and the Father is in me. Hang with me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have done, been doing, and, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of the word. That was John 14, 6 through 13. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just want to say thank you for this day. God, thank you for your God-breathed word. And I just pray that you bring your word to life today, Father God. Lord, just use me as a vessel. I decrease, God, I decrease my name. I decrease my image, my reputation. Everything about me, I decrease so that you may be increased within me, Father God, so that you may be glorified through this message, Lord. I just pray that those who come across this channel, those who come across this video, Father God, that they take something from it, that they are blessed abundantly blessed by it father god i just pray that you speak directly to their situations god i pray that it ministers to their hearts lord and that it encourages them to continue going lord god i thank you and i just pray lord that you speak through me today in jesus name i pray in jesus name i pray amen hallelujah thank you lord thank you thank you hallelujah god i just want to take a moment to praise god i just want to take a moment to really and welcome him into this atmosphere. I just want to take a moment to lift him up and magnify his name. Wherever you are, just say hallelujah. Wherever you are, say praise God. Wherever, wherever you are, just say, God, you are welcome here. You are welcome in my heart and I am available to you in this message. Thank you, Lord. So if you notice, <laughs> after I finished my prayer, I said in Jesus name. Why did I say in Jesus name after my prayer to God? Because Jesus is our access to God. When we are speaking to God, when we are giving him our petition, when we are pouring our hearts out to him, we say in Jesus' name because that is our way to God. No man comes to the Father except through me. That's what Jesus said. And so that's the significance of saying in Jesus' name. Let's get into it. Okay, story time. So I want you guys to get a depiction, right? I don't know if we have any Marvel fans on here any avengers fans on here but i am definitely a marvel fan i love avengers movies i get into it this clip might be from the first iron man but let's get into it so as tony stark is in his lab and as he's moving things around and he has all these neurons and atoms and elements that, he, that he's moving around and he has control over i want us to think about god i want us to imagine that that is god in heaven on his heavenly throne, moving things around in the earth and he's shifting things and he's moving things around and he's taking things from Africa and shifting things and he's taking things from Asia and shifting things in Europe and the United States. He's taking things in the Caribbean and Mexico and he's shifting things, making circumstances change and making things happen. Just imagine that being our God, our God who is sovereign, our God who has all power and all authority just imagine that him in his lab, in heaven, on his heavenly throne, moving things around. Now, I want you to think about yourself. 
And I want you to think, where do you fit into that? How do you get access to that? How do you get God's attention? How do you get him to hear you when you're praying to him, right? And I want you, ima I want you to imagine yourself on the outside of that lab. I want you to imagine yourself where the windows are. Picture you outside of that lab on the outer gates of the kingdom of God, on the outer gates of his heavenly throne, unable to reach him, but trying to get his attention. And you might say, God, Father, answer me, Lord. This is what I really need. Lord, don't you see my situation? God, don't you see my job situation? I just lost this job, Father God, or I'm on this job and I'm having all these issues. I can't figure this out, but I hate asking for help. God, I want you to help me. Can't you hear me, Father God? Have you forgotten about me? And you may be asking, Lord, do you see me? Do you recognize me? Trying to get his attention. Or you may say, God, I just lost someone that was close to me. It might have been through the breaking of a relationship or friendship, or it could have been someone actually passing. And you may say, God, don't you see my pain? Don't you see my hurt? Can you see me? And you're on the outside. And you see God, and you, you see him doing all this moving and shifting. And you see him... You see him in everyone else's life and you see things changing for people and people receiving blessings and their circumstances changing and them advancing. You say, God, don't you see me? Have you forgotten about me? And God, just imagine that he's focused on everything that he's doing and he sees you. But let's just imagine that he's just moving things around and the things that he's focused on has his attention. And that's, let's imagine that he looks over to you standing on the outer gates, trying to get in, trying to get a touch from him, trying to gain access. And just imagine he says to you, what's the magic word? What's the magic word? Because I see you're trying to talk to me and I see you're trying to get inside of the lab, but this is holy ground. This is holy ground. I exist here. Right? He's in his lab and he says, this is where I'm moving, have my being. This is holiness. And I love you, daughter. I love you, son. But you're full of sin. You're full of sin. And if you come in here, this holy ground will no longer be holy, but it will be filled with sin. And I can't coexist with sin because I'm too good and I'm too holy and I'm too righteous. So what's the magic word? And you say, okay, I know what it is, God. I need to go and I need to go do more things. Let me go sign up for some committees at church. Let me go finally start that podcast you told me to start. Let me go go back to school like you told me to. Okay, I'm gonna go do all those things and then I'll meet you back at this door so that I can reach you, so that I can have access to you. And you go and you do all those things and you're busy right? You sign up for the classes, you revise your resume, you apply for more jobs, and you said, okay, I'm working this thing. You know, I'm showing God, you know, I, I want to have access to him, but but I got to do more things, right? And you come back to that, to that gate, you come back to that door. Remember, we're talking about Tony Stark in his lab, and you're on the outside, and you're looking through the window, and you come back to that window, and you say, all right, Lord, look at all that I've done. And he says, what's the magic word? And you said, but Lord, look at all that I've done. Like, God, I've been busy. And he says, what's the magic word? And you said, okay, I know what it is. Lord, you said, I'm too filthy. Let me go get cleaned up. And so you go and you you say, okay, I'm going to stop smoking. I'm, I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to stop partying. I'm going to get my life together. I'm going to get cleaned up because God is saying I can't have access to him but until I get cleaned up. So let me go get my life together first before I get into his presence. Let me go clean myself up first before I'm able to commune with him. And you do all this stuff and you let go of all these bad habits. And you come back to that window and you say, all right, God, look, I'm clean now. You said I was filthy, but look, I, 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 I changed my habits and I'm better and I'm clean now. And God says, What's the magic word? And you sit there and you say, I've done so much. I've done so many works. I checked off everything on the list. I even started reading my Bible more. Why don't I have access to God? The word says <laughs> that no man comes to the father except through Jesus. It's through Jesus that you have access to God. It's by the blood of the lamb that you have access to God. It's because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. When he said, it is finished, all your sins, all your mistakes, your past, all of it was crucified with him. So when you're coming to God and you're petitioning to God and you're asking for stuff, 
He said, what's the magic word? And finally it hit you. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. And when you said Jesus, God dropped everything. He had cosmos and the universe. He had Asia and Africa and Australia in his hands. He was moving things. He was shifting things. The entire universe, the planets, the stars, the moon, the sky, the oceans, the animals. He dropped it all. And he turned to you. And he ran to you. He opened the door and he says, welcome, my daughter. I love you. And I forgive all of your sins. And you are my child. You forever have access to me. You never have to stand on my outer gates. Because at the name of Jesus, you are saved. At the name of Jesus, all of your wrong, all of your mistakes, it's been crucified. At the name of Jesus, you can commune with me because he died. Somebody had to die for your flesh. Somebody had to die for your wrongs. Somebody had to die for all that you've done. And he did it. He was the sacrifice. And I sent my son because I love you that much. And God tells you, he says, never stand on the outer gates again. Hallelujah, Lord. He says, never stand on the outer gates again because you always have access to me. It's in Jesus' name that you have access to me. You never have to stand on the outer gates again. That's the magic word, not the stars in the universe. Because as you could see through the window, all of that is in my hands. Not the, the, the crystals and the chakras and the, the palm readings and all these other things. And you know how we believe in, you know, what, what's your sign, right? Are you a Taurus? Are you an Aries? That don't give you access to God. He says, you always have access to me at the name of Jesus. Use that name. Hallelujah, Lord. I've come to tell somebody today to use that name. Whether you are praying to the Lord and you don't understand why it feels like you're disconnected and you think it's because of all that you've done, use that name and say, at the name of Jesus, I'm saved. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. At the name of Jesus, I am the righteousness of God. I don't have to be held to all the things that I've done. I don't have to be held to the mistakes I'm still making because at the name of Jesus, I have access. And God says, come child, come. This is where you live. You never have to stand out there again. You can stay here with me and sit at my right hand, right beside Jesus. My first point, you come through me, not to me. Jesus says, you come through me, not to me. Jesus is speaking to the disciples. This is before his resurrection. This is before his crucifixion. And he's letting them know, listen, I'm not going to be here forever. I've been walking with you. I've been talking with you. I've been teaching you things. I've been showing you how I have this power, how I've been able to perform these miracles. When I go away to pray, you see where my strength and my help comes from. He says, but guess what? I'm not going to be here forever. And he says, I am the way the truth in the life. No one comes to the father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And he's saying that because you've been with me. He's saying you've been walking with me. And so being as though you've been walking with me, Jesus, you know my father because I am in him and he is in me. And I want to encourage somebody to understand that we're trying to get to God. We're trying to say, Lord, you're sovereign. God, help me in my situation. Father God, I need some things to shift. I need some things to change. When we say in Jesus name, we're coming through Jesus. We're coming through all that he's done for us. We're coming through his sacrifice because when we say Jesus, we got God. Okay. It doesn't work when we say God, we got Jesus. And let me explain that. I don't want nobody over spiritualizing this or making this too deep, but it's important to understand that the only reason we have access to God is through Jesus because he was the one that reconciled us to God. He was the one that died for our wrong, for our shame, for our sins, for our mistakes, right? For all of our guilt, he died for that. And so when we are approaching God, we say, it's by your, it's by Jesus's name that I am coming to you. And because of that, there's nothing that stands between me and you and you and me. So we come through Jesus. Next point. I am in the father and the father is in me. Let's talk about authority. 
the authority that you have when you use that name, the authority that you have when you say Jesus, Jesus, I'm better than this. Jesus, I can't stay in this position. Jesus, I'm sick of the same cycles. I'm sick of the same habits. So at the name of Jesus, God, deliver me. At the name of Jesus, Lord, pull me out of this situation. At the name of Jesus, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I repent. It is at his name. And he says, don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. That's where our help comes from. That's where our authority comes from. Because if God is in Jesus and Jesus is in God, right? Then when we're praying to God in the name of Jesus, that's where our authority comes from. So the things that Jesus did on earth, he tells the disciples, you can do these things too because you're using my name. And if you're using my name, you're using my father's name. He says, yes, I've done many things. I've healed. I've done miracles. I brought the dead back to life. I'm going to die and come back to life. I re resurrect myself. I give life. I breathe life into a dead thing. And you have that same authority at my name. You have that same authority in my name. So at the name of Jesus, son of God, you have authority and you can tell a dead thing to come back to life. You can tell a broken thing to be reconciled. You can show love. You can perform miracles in the earth in the same way that I did in my name. Next point. So whatever you do, do it in my name. He says, he says in verse 12, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the father. Whatever you do, do it in my name. So when you're out getting your degrees, when you're out pursuing, when you're out climbing up the ladder, right? And you're grinding it out and you got all these dreams and all these visions. I need you to do it in my name. And then at the name of Jesus, and I want to touch on this for a second because there are so many different ideologies and so many different beliefs, right? Some people believe in all types of things. Some people believe that they can go pray to statues, right? Some people believe that they can go pray to things that they place in their house or that some type of drug will get them through their situation or that some type of habit or um, relationship is going to get them through their situation. And I want, I want it to be made clear that even if you don't say you're praying to something, whatever is an idol in your heart, that's what you're praying to. Whatever you have made an idol in your heart and by an idol, I just mean you believe that it's going to get you through. You believe that you can depend on that thing. You believe that when times get hard and when you get stressful, you can run to that thing and it's going to help you get through. When all it's doing is helping you cope. When you do those things and you're more dependent on those things than the God, the father, right? Not just any God because there are all different gods, right? According to people's beliefs. If I go based on somebody who has a different religion than me, they serve a God too. But it's not the same God that I serve because the God that I serve is God, the father who sent his one and only son to die for my sins. That's the God I serve. And so just because somebody says they went to go pray about something, you don't know who they praying to. Just because somebody says, oh, they talk to God about something. You don't know what God they're talking about because the only thing that distinguishes my God and your God is Jesus. And we're not talking about Jesus, the son of man, who knows what God we're talking about. And so going back to the idols, if you made something an idol in your heart, if you become dependent on that thing, when you're saying God, you're talking about your idol. When you're saying God help me and deliver me, you're praying to your idol. But when you say Jesus, it's alerting God because he said, okay, you did it in Jesus name. So you're praying to me, God, the father. Jesus says, I am the father, I am in him, and he is in me. So when you say, when you say your prayer and you say in Jesus' name, everybody's under the same understanding of the God that we are praying to. Everybody's under that same understanding. And when I'm talking to somebody about God and when I'm sharing the gospel with him or with them, when I'm sharing the gospel with them, I'm going to say, it's by the blood of Jesus that I'm saved. It's by the blood of Jesus that I can say God the Father. It's by the, the blood of Jesus that I can commune with God. That's the God that I serve. That's the God that I'm introducing you to. I don't know what gods you're already serving. I don't know what idols you already have. I'm sure you're doing something that's working for you or something that does not work for you. But let me tell you about my God. And what distinguishes my God from the God that you may be serving is Jesus. Let's go to verse 13. My last point is ask it in his name. 
Ask it this time in his name. This time, ask it in my name. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the father may be glorified in the son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. So this emphasizes the fact that there's power in the name of Jesus. You can't just say, oh, God and God and God without without missing the fact that the only reason I have access to God the Father is because of the Son. So I'm asking in His name because that's where my authority comes from. That's where I get the resources and that's where I get access to the Father. Remember the visual that we started with. We got Tony Stark, he's in his lab. He's moving everything around, that's God. He's moving things around, he's shifting circumstances. When I'm standing on the outer gates, the only thing that gives me access to the inside is the name of Jesus. So when I ask for something, when I'm talking to God from the outside, I say in Jesus name. And now I have access on the inside. Now I have the resources. Now I have the job opportunities. Now doors are opening. Now I'm getting aligned. Now I'm getting some clarity. Now I know my purpose. Now I can do my vision board. Now I can set my goals because things are beginning to flow for me. There's some resistance. Yes. There's some trials. Yes. There's some things that are coming up that are coming against me, but things are beginning to fall in alignment because I'm in alignment. I know that the only way I get to the father is through Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be free. In the name of Jesus, you will live and not die. In the name of Jesus, I will live and not die. In the name of Jesus, I am above and not beneath. In the name of Jesus, I am a daughter of God. I am a daughter of God. I am a friend of God. In the name of Jesus, God is going to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And what? Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He's not just going to do it because he loves you. He's not just going to do it because he's God. He's not just going to do it because he's sovereign. He's going to do it because he's God the Father. And because Jesus has given us access to whatever it is that he has. So if he has power and if he has dominion, if he has authority at the name of Jesus, I have those things too. Because when I come into that lavatory, I'm sitting at his right hand. So I'm going to say, oh Lord, you're doing this in Asia. Okay, I want to be part of that. Father God, can you place me over there? God will place me in Asia. Oh Lord, you're doing this in Australia. Okay, I see how you're moving things. And I see how, you know, people are showing up. People are volunteering. I want to be part of that. Can you put me there? He going to put me there. Oh Lord, I see what you're doing in my city. I see what you're doing in my church. I see what you're doing in my house. I want to be part of that, Father God. And because you're God, I have access to whatever you have access to in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, can I partner with you and be part of that? All right, so now I'm in my house and I'm preaching the word of God. Okay, so now i got a ministry and I'm preaching the word of God. Okay, so now I'm in the courtroom and I'm representing God. I might not say the name Jesus, but you're going to know who I'm on behalf of because I'm going to look different. I'm going to talk different. I'm going to carry myself differently. I become a partner with God. In Jesus name I have access to what he has access to in Jesus name I have all power and authority in Jesus name I can take dominion of this earth on what he assigns to my life in Jesus name hallelujah Lord thank you Jesus praise God let's review our points first you come through me not to me second I am in him and he is in me third whatever you do do it in my name. And fourth, ask in my name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. And before I pray, you may be saying to yourself, wow, I really needed this. Wow, I want to take this word and I want to do something with it. I don't want to just sit on this. I don't want to just be inspired, but I want to take my faith and put it into action. Like the Bible says that faith without works is dead. Faith with no action is inoperable. So what are you going to do to put your faith to action based off this word? Some of you may want to give your life to Christ and say, hey, I want to know this Jesus that she's talking about. I want a relationship with this Jesus that she's talking about. I want to be able to commune with God. So how do I do that? Some of you may be saying you need to repent and you realize that you haven't been serving God the Father. You haven't been serving God in Jesus name. You've been having your own gods, your own idols, the own, your own things that you've been depending on versus depending on the power of Jesus Christ. And if that's you, if you fall into either of those categories or if you want God to meet you in a different area, say this prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. 
Thank you for speaking directly to my heart. Father God, I want to serve you, God the Father. I thank you for loving me so much that you sent your only begotten son to die for my sins. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I accept him as my savior. I repent for all my wrong, for all my guilt, for all my unforgiveness. And you can say here, whatever you want to say, what you're repenting for. But God, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and savior. And I want to walk out my faith. So God, I just pray that you reveal to me how. In Jesus name, amen. Praise God. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and TikTok at journeywithjazz underscore. Be sure to tune in into my next episode.